Welcome to this new Cat Labs video. Today we're going to be discussing the Photometer 2 by DLG Electronics, which is a British company that manufactures in house this magnificent focal plane metering system uh, for large format cameras for 4x5 and 5x7, and potentially even larger. Uh, it utilizes the same system devised by Ansel Adams uh, for metering on the focal plane. Uh, which enables you to focus attention specifically or the metering and the exposure to various areas on the image without having to spot meter in the world instead of uh, metering on uh, what's actually happening inside the camera. So it's kind of a TTL metering system through the lens metering system for large format cameras but it really enables uh, much more specific creative control uh, on the type of exposures uh, that you're going to have. So. Let's see what we have inside the box. Uh, they're packed really nicely, and uh, let's see what they what they have. Uh, so first of all, we have the manual, which is very well written and uh, covers pretty much everything that this system does. Um, and uh, here we have the meter. Uh, the meter uh, takes a nine volt square battery, uh, which is not supplied with the meter, but you can. Uh, they're readily available anywhere, so that's pretty basic. And most meters take 9 volt batteries. Uh, spot meters take, uh, or some meters take 9 volt batteries, so this is pretty simple. Let's put the meter down. The next thing is the uh, metering frame, and the metering frame is just a plastic frame that imitates a 4x5 uh, film holder and it goes directly in the camera and it holds the probe, and we'll see how this works in a second. Uh, next is the actual probe with the photosensitive cell at the top and a cable connector at the rear. Um, and we have a good, a good a length of a meter, a meter and a half uh, extension cable for the probe uh, and some packing material. So I'm going to put this aside for now. All right. And uh, for those of you who shoot 5x7, here's the uh, 5x7 frame uh, probe carrier. Uh, we've asked for an 8x10 carrier, but we haven't, uh, we haven't heard back about that yet, but I'm pretty sure that's something that will be uh, available with enough demand. Uh, and let's see how it works. It's, it really is very simple. Uh, first of all, let's look at the features of the meter itself. Uh, first of all, let's go from top to bottom, uh, because most of the settings here are pretty basic. Film speed setting, that's your ISO setting. Uh, in a range from 32 ISO to 1600. Of course you can compensate for this if you're using a different kind of exposure index but most films that people will be using are in this range. Next is the speed range for the dial on top. It's fractions of a second, whole seconds, whole minutes, or whole hours. And then the exposure speed which is right here in a range from 1 to 2000 and really, if you're most of the time going to be daylight exposures are going to be a fraction of a second, then you'll be uh, on this range here. Um, next, you have the input dial. Now, the input dial has four settings: uh, off and on. And we'll get to the one and two a little later. Uh, but once I turn it on, if I hit the battery test button, we'll get a green light uh, telling us that the I don't know if the camera picks it up, but will tell us that the battery is good. Um, and if we press the uh, um, if we press the meter, we'll get uh, if once we connect the probe, we'll get a good reading. Um, now, at the top here, let's turn this around. It is a uh, zone scale with a zero in the middle and six uh, stops on either side. So we have um, uh, close to thirteen. It's thirteen stops from side to side in the entire range. Uh, which is pretty much what most negatives would give you. And in any case, it's a good range of exposure from the darkest to the brightest point on any kind of exposure, enough to make that type of adjustment. Um, now, let's connect it and we'll see what the uh, rest of the dials do. I'm going to start by putting in uh, my uh, carrier. And really, this fits like any other film holder. And I'll just open this lens open the aperture all the way up. Whoa. Okay, so it's a Fuji 150 6.3. Uh, the probe has a little bit of a bulge to it from where the photo cell is fit in, so you have to kind of help it in a little bit. 
but once it's in, it's in. Okay. And another nice feature here is that you can remove this uh, dark slide, which in the manual is called the shutter. But if you remove it, then you can actually still access general idea of where your frame is to adjust the probe to see where it is. But if you have backlight or any kind of other stray light that might hit the ground glass while you're working, you want to close the shutter to make sure that you get an accurate reading. Um, and I'm going to plug the probe in. Okay, and uh, once the meter is on, the reading starts. And right now it's showing minus five, just about. Um, and uh, one of the nice features here is that you have two hold positions. Um, the positions can be used, the hold positions can be used to mark the two brightest points or brightest and darkest point or two darkest points on your exposure. As you move the probe around, you'll get a different, you'll get a different type of exposure uh, depending on where it is. Right now we have a pretty even illumination because of this white background. Uh, but if I point the camera uh, somewhere else and move the probe, you'll see that the uh, needle is moving. Uh, quite a quite a bit depending on where the probe is looking that that's just reflecting uh, different exposure areas or different brightness areas on the negative or on the image plane and what I could do is right here I could press number one to mark this point and let's move the probe to the second position and mark number two and now every time I switch between one and two and let's see if we can see this uh, The settings are moving to where the memory was set for those two settings, for two and one. And if I put it, uh, sorry, sorry, for one and for two. And if I put it back on on, it's just where the probe is. Again, as you move it, the needle will be moving. Um, now, if you look at the needle again, as you adjust your exposure setting, the needle will move to compensate. So I'm in increasing the exposure here, and the needle's moving upwards. If I adjust the ISO settings, of course, the needle will move again to compensate accordingly. Same goes for uh, your range settings. Of course, if I put it on full seconds now, it's going to be um, much bigger increments uh, in, mo in movements here. And I have the ISO settings set pretty low, but uh, just so that we can see the differences. And of course, at a minute, the needle should be slammed all the way down because too much exposure. So the unit is encased in a hard rubberized shell and a metal housing underneath, uh, a metal shell and uh, plastic housing. It's very robust, it's very well built, it's uh, kind of um, tough uh, type of knobs and buttons so that this is something that you can definitely take out into the field. The cable is pretty generic, so I mean that's easy to replace if it needs to be, uh, and the frame holder as well as pretty basic and it's a relatively inexpensive uh, device relative to the cost of a spot meter. So instead of having to frame separately and meter separately, now you can do both things at the same time. This really is a game changer in the sense that uh, no one has been making this type of focal plane metering since Braun Color and Senar stopped doing these sometime in the 90s. Uh, Zone 6 briefly had a focal plane metering system, uh, but this is an innovative uh, and excellent product uh, that can basically overcome all the needs for spot, spot metering uh, and zone system metering on large format systems. It's available on our website at www.catlabs.info and check the uh, comments below for uh, the links for this specific product. Uh, and we can't wait to get this out to you. Uh, <clears throat> do comment if you have any questions and we're definitely looking forward to seeing people's experiences with this in the field. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we hope to see you again for the next video. Thanks for watching.